Um, welcome everyone, I'm Tabia from the Confucius Institute in Manchester. Um, we've, um, we've asked Feisha Yu from UCLan um, CI to um, give us a talk on Taoism again after two of her fantastic tutorials where she showed us the eight movements of Qigong, uh, eight of them. Um, and afterwards we realized there was a real thirst for um, to find out more about the topic. So I'm um, really pleased to welcome Feisha back. Um, just a quick, quickly about the, how we're gonna run this. So the session will last for an hour. Um, Feisha will talk for 45, 50 minutes or so. So we'll have some, uh, time at the end for questions. If you could put them in the chat, that'd be good. And then I'll read them out for for Fesha to answer. Um, the session will be recorded as well, just to make you aware. So if you don't want to be in it, then you better switch your um, video off. Um, and I will send out the link for the recording uh, probably yeah over the next couple of days. You'll get that by email. Um, okay, that's all for me. Thank you again for joining us and I'll um, hand over to Feisha. Well, thank you very much, uh, Tabia, and thank you, Karen, for this opportunity. And we were just talking about it, it, it's a great thing that we are able to share uh, this sort of uh, this beautiful art of uh, Chinese health preservation. And we have, this practice has got a very, very long history. So what I'm going to do is to share the screen with you and then we'll give a talk uh, in terms of the, the theories behind it. So uh, first I would like to say that this is not meant to replace your any treatment that you are going to get from your, your doctor or anything like that. Even personally, uh, when I have uh, sort of any pain anywhere like that, I still go and see uh, a chiropractor or a physiotherapist. But I think uh, it's a good idea to use uh, Daoyin or Qigong as a complementary way of uh, making sure that we, we stay very flexible and healthy. Okay, so today's talk is about Taoism, TCM, i.e. traditional Chinese medicine, and the link to health preservation practice in China. And uh, I'm told that this is part of the China lecture series for the Confucius Institute at uh, Manchester University. Now, you may ask, well, well why, why Tai Chi now? Actually, Tai Chi and uh, Dao Ying has had a very, very long history. But why do we want to have this talk now? I think one of the reasons is uh, because just before Christmas last year, Chinese Tai Chi was enlisted as uh, the UNESCO's cultural uh, heritage, as the intangible cultural heritage list. And I think that is a, a very good badge of uh, honor for China. And China likes things like this. It's sort of it's got this international recognition of it. Actually, th there is no need to worry about whether it's valid or not. Uh, WHO has uh, recognized that, recommends that, and even for the NHS, if you search on the NHS website, what is Tai Chi, you will see the explanation there. And also it's recommended for fall prevention. That's one of the major things. And why is it good for fall prevention? Now, hopefully later on, we'll talk about that. Uh, it's also very good for uh, easing lower back pain. And now it's used uh, in the COVID-19 situation, it's been used a lot for people's recovery from long COVID. And one of the things that is for people who suffered from, from COVID-19, when they recover, the, they still need, this is a, a long way to go for those people that had uh, serious uh, symptoms. And um, uh, now, we're talking about Tai Chi and Qigong and Dao Yin, so these words and what is the relationship of it. Tai Chi is more well known in the West, and I think partially because of the Chinese martial art. Tai Chi is a type of martial art. It, it has got uh, fighting, so attack and defense applications. And um, some people will group uh, Tai Chi as part of Dao Yin, or oh, another word for it is qigong. So dao yin literally just means to stretch, 
okay, Tao is to, to stretch, to, to guide your breathing, to make your breathing more harmonious. And Yin is to stretch the body. And by stretching the body, you are stretching the meridian so the Qi flows better. And Qi Gong literally actually means Qi exercise or Qi work. Now, but what is Qi? There are different explanations of if you look at just Qi on its own, it could be air. Uh, the air that we breathe in, and it could also mean energy. So qi gong you can see as energy work. So dao ying is, is another word for qi gong. While uh, tai ji and dao ying, they they all belong to the same group of exercise. We say sort of uh, we call it yang sheng, sort of health preservation practice. And this is very very different from sort of uh, the idea of exercise in the West. So now let's have a look. Uh, uh, well, first of all, just very quickly tell you a little bit about Taoism. For those that understand the Chinese history, you know there is the warring state, i.e. before China was uh, unified into what we know is China now. And it used to be different parts. There are mainly seven uh we call it states. So they were fighting for dominance. And Qin, if you look at the, the map, uh, on the most left part, i.e. on the curves at the bottom of the Yangtze River, uh, the Yellow River is the Qin state. So Qin, if you know the terracotta warriors, you know the first emperor is from the Qin state. And Qin was able to grow and then sort of unify the whole of uh, China. But the reason I, I, I want to mention about the warring state is because in that period of time, all the different states and the different schools of thought, we call it a hundred schools of thought, different philosophies, different way, different understanding of the world and different uh, ideal ways of uh, governing the country. They were all fighting for the attention of the, the head of the states, i.e. The, the small kings. And then it, it was in this period and Taoism had, uh, had a, a, a good chance of further development. Actually, Taoism appeared way before that. And now the core text is Dao De Jing and Zhuangzi. Actually, there are more than 8,000 scrolls of text. You know, before uh, China invented the, the paper, we, we didn't have publishing. So all the writing were carved on bamboo strips. And then the strips were all stringed together and they rolled it into, into a text like a book. A book could be many dozens of rows of uh, bamboo rolls with the text there. And that partially also explains why the Chinese writing goes right from top to left because that's how we carve the bamboo sticks. But anyway, I don't want to digress. Uh, okay, so the key figures is Zhuangzi and Laozi. Zhuangzi is the, this little person floating on the river, and he is supposed to be a disciple of uh, Laozi. Laozi is the person that's riding on the ox. And famously, he didn't write, he didn't leave his any, bo uh, any books. He was just going to leave China from the west of China. But the guard said, no, please put your, put your ideas down. So he decided to stay. And I think over a day or so, he just wrote the whole book. It's very short. There are only 5,000 characters. But almost every single character they say is worth a piece of gold and very condensed has very philosophical and sometimes they think a bit mystical as well. And so Zhuangzi is his disciple and Lao, uh, Kongzi, the Confucius uh, Institute, we all know Kongzi. Uh, Confucius is supposed to have consulted and in discussion with Laozi about, about the world, about philosophy. Okay. And the core idea is uh, the Tao, I, the Tao that can be named is not the Tao. So it's, that's why we say it's a very mystical way of uh, 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 text. And the, another key idea is Yin Yang is talking about balance. So if you look at the, on the top right corner, you've got this, they call it like the Yin Yang fish, like two fish. 
So if you look at these two circles, if you draw a line through this circle, it doesn't matter if you go through the center of the, the circle, it doesn't matter how you draw it, you're always going to get half of the, the shape in black and the other half in, in white. And then there is, and you can see the white, for example, from the small part, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And before it gets to the biggest part, a little black starts to grow. So there is, we always say there is yin in yang and there's yang in yin. And then when it comes to the TCM idea about your, our physical health, is it's good to have the balance of yin yang. Too much yin or too much yang is bad for your health. And that's why some of the exercise we do is to encourage the flow of the yang or the yin, or better still is to make sure the unhindered flow of the energy. For example, at the back of our body, uh, from the bottom of, from your tailbone, it comes all the way up the spine, all the way up to your, your skull. And then it ends just behind the, the top te uh, front teeth. And that, that is the yang meridian. The yang meridian rises. And then uh, the yin meridian starts from your bottom lip. It goes all the way down the front. And then it connects to the, it, it goes into the, well, I, I don't know what the word is for, for men, for women. It goes back into our womb there. Uh, and that energy travels down. And in some of, some of our exercise, we ask you for the preparation stage, you put the tip of your tongue just behind your front teeth. And that in a way, your tongue is like a bridge. So you, you bridge, you connect the yin and the yang together. So to help the energy to flow better. Okay. And another important idea of Taoism is wu wei, i.e. do nothing. But this do nothing doesn't mean being lazy and absolutely do nothing. But what it meant is don't uh, go against the flow. So it's a good idea to go with the flow. And then a government should govern by not controlling, not excessively controlling uh, the, the, the system, the, the citizens or too many rules and regulations, etc. And there is a, a famous a metaphor is saying that govern a country is like a frying small fish. You know the Chinese stir fry? So if it's a tender small fish, you just want to put the fat there and put the fish there. You don't want to be keep stirring it. Uh, otherwise, you just break up the fish. So they say, uh, governing a big state is like frying a small fish. Don't over stir it. Don't do it excessively. Just leave it be. Okay. Now, Taoism and TCM, they, they have a, a sort of a, a lot of the ideas is the same. We focusing on the yin yang balance and we want to make sure the qi flows. And also everything is should be in moderation. And the focus is on prevention. It's okay to cure any, any disease, but a better doctor would stop you from developing the disease in the first place or at the start of the disease to kill it in the butt so to stop it avoiding it from getting worse and the classic when it comes to TCM it's a book called the internal canon of the yellow emperor okay Huang Di Nei Jin. okay now the Taoist way of understanding the human body is very different from the Western Orthodox medicine. The Western Orthodox medicine is based on sort of like an anatomy. So we look at, we break up the body parts and then we try to analyze, we understand each part in our process of understanding the whole. But in China, uh, we see the human body, obviously there is the anatom anatomical part, different parts of the body, but there is also the yin yang balance. Also, there is the life given force, the qi. So we were born with yuan qi, almost like the, the primordial uh, qi that you were given by your parents. The moment your, the, your parents, the sperm and the egg meets, that's the point when you were made. 
And it was at that point that you start to, to grow and develop this energy. And you were born with this energy. So you can see the body almost like uh, the energy, like in a, in a canister. So you're born with this fixed amount. But in our everyday life, we consume energies. So the moment you run out of this energy, you use up all the energy, that is where life ends. And in Chinese expression, we've got the word duan qi or mei qi le, duan qi, okay? So it means that the qi stops ends and that is where life ends. But then how do we prolong our lives? The whole purpose of Taoist, I, I think, is sort of a, they want to pursue this immortality. In a way, uh, one of the four great inventions of China, gunpowder, they weren't trying to invent gunpowder for war or for fighting purpose. Rather, it's the, the hermits, the Taoist hermit, try, they mix different elements together, trying to create the so-called elixir. In the process, it led to explosions and et cetera, et cetera. That, that's how they discovered the, the gunpowder. But anyway, I've digressed. Let, let's come back. The, so the implication, to yang sheng, i.e. health preservation, is do not waste your qi. And uh, you also, you are able to replenish the qi. There are two ways of replenishing it. One is through eating uh, nutritious food. So you get the essence, the, the, the gu qi, sort of the essence, the nutrient from food, and they replenish the body. And the other thing is by cai qi, you collect this sort of uh, energy from the universe, from your surroundings. And there is the qi in the ground, there's the qi in the air, in the universe, etc. It's through practicing, breathing, different ways of breathing, you increase the, the qi there. And you want the whole body to be filled with this vital energy. And one other way is to stop wasting the qi. So when it comes to exercise, it's, it doesn't go the same way as the Olympic slogan. The Olympic slogan says faster, stronger, quicker, higher, etc. But in the TCM uh, or the Taoist way of exercise, it recognizes you must exercise. If you don't exercise, then everything gets static, the, the qi won't flow and it's not healthy for you. But at the same time, you don't want to be panting for breath all the time. So going for long marathon runs, particularly when you get to a certain age, in the eyes of the Taoist, it's not a good idea. Even now, my, my parents, like long phone calls halfway across the world, they will still say, tell your husband, don't exercise excessively. My husband goes rock climbing and, and I used to cycle end, end to end, et cetera, et cetera. So in the eyes of my parents, my dad is a TCM doctor and he's really, really against it. Now, I'm not saying that you mustn't do this. I, what I'm just saying that the Chinese TCM way of perception of the body is you exercise, but you do it in moderation. Don't do it excessively. Otherwise, you waste the tea. Okay, so the other thing about the, the uh, in their training, so qi gong, the work, the energy work, is we want to be able to take long breath, long, even breath. So deep breathing, long breathing, but also very, very even to such an extent that it's almost undetectable and almost like you are able to stop breathing. Obviously, you can't, but you breathe in such a such a sort of almost an undetectable way, and that that is the ultimate uh, aim for it. And it doesn't mean you can't do anything. You can still go out, go for a run. You can still do uh, all the everyday activities, but make sure you give yourself the time and every day set aside some time for you to then look inside of yourself, and then control the breathing. And I think it's very, very good. It's another word for mindfulness. Okay. And uh, uh, okay. The other thing is sort of uh, the static and, and uh, meditation in motion. So we have static meditations. 
a lot of the qigong exercise is done sitting down. You perhaps some of you that practice a tai chi already know that we have to, we do the pole stand, i.e., as if you are you are holding a tree, so slightly sinking down, holding a tree. Uh, that's, that's one way. Or you could just sit down, cross legged. By sitting down cross legged, there's the advantage of sort of opening up, opening up your hip. And then because of the shape of the body, it means the heart doesn't have to uh, pump too hard for the blood to circulate through the body or the chi to circulate through the body. Okay. And so that's the static meditation. But we also have uh, meditation in motion. And tai, tai Chi is famously known as meditation in motion because it ask you in performing the movements to be very, very mindful. Sometimes, for example, the opening stance of uh, having the feet apart, shoulder width, and slowly, slowly float your hands up. When you slowly float your hands up, you can just like lift your hands up, but that's not the qigong or tai chi way. It wants you to feel as if you've got a big balloon inside of you. It's the qi rises that brings your hand up. So all the movement, typical tai chi and qigong movements are very, very slow. The purpose of it being slow, I think is twofold. twofold. One is for you to be very mindful. You look back, you focus your attention on your body, on your breathing and on the physical movement. Uh, and I think that to be that mindful, it stops you from thinking about anything else. So I think that that's quite a, a important thing. One other thing about the, uh, the TCM is uh, 天人合一. Uh, their, their idea is we human body should be in harmony of nature. So the Tian here can mean uh, heavens, but it can also mean nature. I Again, it goes back to what I mentioned earlier on. So don't go against the, uh, the flow. It is just go with the flow. And then uh, in TCM, the, because this philosophy started thousands of years ago, the, the Chinese people at the time, their understanding of the natural world is limited. So they divide the world into five elements, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. And so that, that these five elements, they will promote each other, but at the same time, they restrict each other. For example, wood, you can think about is trees. Trees would, uh, uh, a wood would promote fire. Fire would promote uh, earth, earth promotes uh, metal, metal promotes water, etc. But it also goes the other way. So uh, fire will constrict wood and vice versa. So, so this, this, if you look at the, the diagram there, there is the xiang sheng xiang ke. So they both promote and restrict each other in terms. And what is the implication when it comes to the human body? And that would mean, for example, in the six healing songs, one of the things we do is uh, we scroll down, we collect the, the kidney water and we bring it up to crunch uh, or to dampen the excessive uh, fire or the heat in the heart meridians. And because the, the kidney water is of, uh, the essence of life, we need the heat in the body because we need the, the, the warmth, etc. But we don't want too much heat. And also, uh, with the kidney water, it dampens the heat. And the heat also warms up the water as well. So all these different organs work with each other. And sometimes, uh, if any of you have ever gone to a Chinese herbal medicine doctor, if say, for example, you've got a cold or whatever uh, illness, and they don't just give you one, one herb or one pill. Rather, it gives you typically five, six, or sometimes even more different herbs. And there is always the main herb that will cure, for example, the liver. Maybe bring the, the uh, liver tea up. But if the liver tea is too 
too much, then it will damage the kidney. So that they will, there will be another herb there to balance it out. So there's always more than I think from what I remember from my childhood growing up in the Chinese pharmacies, all those herbs, the drawers with different herbs, there's always quite a lot. Five, six, seven would be quite a typical to have different herbs. The, the purpose is in the understanding in line with the TCM principle, when you dampen something, then something else, the, the yin or the yang, they will come up too much. And then you need something else to keep that down. So what you want is a dynamic balance there. And that's why when you go and see a doctor uh, with one condition, maybe a week later, you go back to see the doctor. They will then, based on your current situation, uh, adjust the prescription uh, slightly. And they, that's why they say they will have, uh, for the same disease, the same symptom, they would have many different prescriptions. And then for the same patient, they will have different description, uh, prescriptions based on the development of that condition. Okay. Now, uh, let's have a look and see. Oh, here is just giving you the example of uh, the Liu Zijie, the six healing sound. So I think you can see uh, what promotes what and what restricts what. Okay, so just now we give the example of uh, kidney water. Uh, you, you could dampen the excessive heat in, the, in your heart. And then the, the heart can then promote or restrict various other things. So the, the, the heat may promote the P. Now P, as, uh, as the, the five organs, uh, we have the lungs, we have uh, kidney, uh, liver, heart, and spleen. Spleen, we tend to, I think in this country, when you understand, see digestion, say the, the, the stomach, uh, sort of intestines, large and small intestines, etc. But it's also, the, in the TCM way, they also pay a lot of attention to the spleen. And they think if you have the healthy steam, uh, spleen, that it could help you with your digestion. And then in, in turn, it also helps your lungs, etc. So the six uh, healing sounds correspond to different organs. Okay, and why do we make the sounds? We, when we say qi gong is uh, energy work, is focusing on the breathing. So the qi and xue, so qi is your breathing, your energy, xue is the blood. So the blood, we want the blood to flow, but how does it flow? It's the energy driving the blood to, to uh, flow around in the body. And that's why by controlling your breathing, you'll be able to encourage that so that it flows more smoothly. It doesn't mean to make it flow faster, but flow more smoothly, more a balanced, a balanced way. Also by the six healing sounds, making the sounds, I don't know any of you do any chanting, but some of you may actually may sing and you, you will feel when you are singing, the vibration in your voice is not just in your throat, it's in your chest, it's in your mouth cavity, in the nose, and in, sometimes it's, you feel it's even in the heart. So the whole, you, feel, you can feel the vibration there. And is this vibration actually can unblock any tiny blockage. Uh, for those that if you practice the Tibetan singing bowls, so the vibration, you have the, you have the singing bowl, put it in different parts of the body, strike it, so it vibrates. And if that vibration, because the human body is uh, mixed up with so much water in it, that vibration then transferred into the body and then it helps to unblock anything. The TCM's belief is uh, if there is a blockage, then it may cause pain. Okay, you, you only get rid of the pain by making sure the, the blood, the energy and everything flows smoothly. Right, the Huang Di Nei Jing, and I would say it's not just a medicine, a medical text. It's also used to 
govern a country, they say the best doctor is to govern the country. The middle doctor would, would uh, uh, cultivate, would cure a person, and the not so great doctor would cure the disease. So they actually set the doctors in different uh, levels. And it feels like if you are only responding, curing the disease, then you are only just a basic doctor. And if you are able to deal with the whole person, i.e. detect whether an illness is in the development stage and stop it from developing, or better still, make sure everything works properly so you don't get it, you don't fall ill in the first place. So that's the story of uh, bian qie zhi wei bing. So prevention comes first. Uh, I know some of you are students at the Confucius uh, Institute, uh, either at Yukon or in Manchester. And some of you may be studying some Chinese. Just a few characters here to illustrate what we've just been saying. So the, the, here, the first word, xiu xi, meaning rest. So the two characters, the first one, xiu, two parts. The left part is a person. The right part is a tree. So a person leaning on a tree, having a rest. That's how what that character mean, but xiu xi to rest also there is another word xi xi there. The top character is actually being sort of simplified. It used to mean the nose, okay. And if you put the nose above your heart, i.e., again looking back, concentrating on yourself, that is proper rest. So having a physical rest, leaning against the tree, or sitting down on the tree, that's fine. But you so all you should also rest the mind, i.e., put your nose above your heart, not to think about anything else. The word for wisdom in Chinese is zhi hui. So zhi literally means intelligence, and this character is made up of two parts. The top part zhi, as in zhi shi, meaning knowledge. And then the bottom part is ri. So every day you gain some new knowledge. So that's intelligence. But the second character means wisdom. And this character is divided into three parts. The top part is the, it looks like, well, it used to be two hands holding a broom. The middle part is the broom. And then the bottom part is the heart. So every day you should use your the broomstick to to dust the heart, to make sure your heart stays crystal, stays clear. And that is where you gain your wisdom. The last one, the last character, Huo, is to live, uh, to live or live. Again, two parts of the character. The left part, the three dots, meaning water. The right part, meaning the tongue. So that means So if your tongue has got water around it, i.e. not too dry, then you've got life. That's why in our Qigong exercise, at the end, I, if I have time, I'll ask you to do the red dragon stir the sea exercise, i.e. close your mouth gently, use the tip of your tongues to massage every teeth inside, three times one direction, three times the other direction. Or some uh, Qigong routines also ask you to do it on the outside of the mouth as well. So it doesn't look very nice, but keep doing it three times each direction and then plus the, just between your lips and the, and the teeth, do it again three times each direction. At the end, you actually generate a lot of salivas. So that is what we meant by shui, next to the water, next to the tongue, is that saliva is uh, very, very sort of uh, uh, health promoting. You all know with modern uh, medicine, this is proven that en uh, in your saliva, there's a lot of enzymes. So the enzymes has got this or that very good function. So do this. And I think, please do this as we continue this talk. Now, the Chinese believe uh, the best way of keeping yourself healthy, obviously you can take, take a herbal medicine, you can take medicine, but it's not as good as if you eat the proper food. So health is intricately linked to your diet. And in China, Chinese medicine, food cure is a very, very uh, big. For example, we, in, in my cooking, I, I think, I would be at a loss if you stop me using garlic and ginger. 
um, I, I, I wouldn't know what to do. That, that's always almost like my staple uh, seasoning things. Both garlic and ginger are very, very good. Uh, it cures many, many conditions. You don't have to eat it in a huge amount, so for a little bit each time. And then food cure is not as good as sleep. So if you are able to have a good night's sleep, it causes a lot of problem. It certainly helps you on the recovery uh, journey. If you suffer from insomnia, it's not just insomnia. The, the body will then fall ill in many other ways. However, even uh, the sleep cure is not as good as the qi cure. The qi cure, i.e. the energy work, the, the, you, if you are able to, to do your own practice to make sure through breathing, you can guide the energy to flow in whatever way that is desirable to the body. And that is even better than sleep cure. But I think it, we can do all of them. Right. Uh, let's look at the principles of uh, Dao Ying or Qigong or Tai Chi, really. It's these three parts, we can say it's these three, the, the trinity. One is Tiao Shen. The first thing is to regulate the, the body. So by doing whatever stretch, whatever movements, we, we first, we want our body to do certain things first, to make sure the posture is correct. And through that, you synchronize it with your breath, breathing, you guide the energy flow in certain way. Uh, and then by doing those first two, then lastly, you bring your mind together. So if you are able to synchronize your, the physical movements with your breathing and the mind together, then that is the ultimate uh, level of uh, Qigong practice or Dao Yin or Tai Chi. Okay, so we say the mind leads the qi, the qi leads the blood, and the, the blood circulation, when it's circulating well, it dispels illness. So what we want, uh, but when it comes to focusing your mind, there's one thing to, uh, to remember is in moderation. And we say, so put your mind very gently, just leave it there rather than heavily concentrating because you may get too much energy going to the wrong place and you, you are not able to control it or you get disrupted like in the middle of a, a highly concentrated uh, practice, then somebody disrupts you, then it will take you a little while to get back to yourself. Okay, and there is this uh, famous thing is a Tao is saying as well. So we need to keep the balance. We talked about the yin yang balance. Uh, they say, just like uh, water can float a boat, but it can also sink the boat. Fire can bring warmth, but it can also burn. So you need to find that balance. I think uh, a very high level Qigong practitioner will be very sensitive towards the body. They will be able to tell that, oh, maybe this set of routine is better for me now uh, rather than a, a different uh, practice. So what we want is uh, slow, gentle movements to encourage very delicate, constant, very deep, and long breathing and abdominal breathing as well. So sometimes when we are very nervous, we are very anxious, our breathing is very shallow. We just breathe in here. But what we want is for the, the breathing to come down. So come down. So for what we call diaphragmic, uh, diaphragm, whatever that word is, I can't, can't say it now, but it's abdominal breathing. Push the diaphragm diaphragm down, so the qi goes down to dan tian. So dan tian is two or three fingers underneath your uh, tummy button. And that is the place where the vital energy resides. And you always, always want to bring the energy back from there after your practice. Uh, here, just wanted to, a, a few famous saying from my, my, I worship Master Zhang at the moment. Uh, so these are his uh, sayings. And according to the traditional theory, our body is made up of qi. And then we need to use different means to make sure we replenish the qi or move the qi in a desirable way. And so that 
That's why we say we should adjust our body, breathing, and mind together. Okay. Now, here are the examples of Dao Ying, uh, Ba Duan Jing, so the eight movement Dao Ying. I think uh, uh, I did the two workshops for Manchester CI. You'll be able to find the YouTube links there. Here, just want to say, to tell, explain that the eight movements in the names, it tells you what you are doing and what the purpose is. For example, in the first one, so both hands as if you're holding up the heaven. And then what's the purpose of that is to regulate the triple burners, i.e. sort of you, you can see you are making, creating more space for your internal organs. It's like uh, helping it to, to massage that. Okay, and then the other one, for example, if you look at the third one, tell me is to adjust the digestion, the spleen and the stomach. What you need to do is to stretch diagonally. By stretching diagonally, this sort of uh, stretch is very different from doing it like that. So you're stretching different parts. Also, uh, it's a lot of the qigong movements, the moment you start doing it, you are rotating, rotating the arms, ro rotating your, your neck or back, etc. And it's very, very important to make sure you have a very flexible spine. Also, the rotation, uh, this most powerful one, say, for example, there's a tea towel here and you want to get rid of the water, you can do whatever shape you want and it helps. But the most effective way it's just to ring the tea towel, ring it like that, and you get, uh, get the water out more effectively. And it's the same. So for example, when we do one of the exercise, if you have your baby fingers facing you, the, the, the palms coming up from the abdominals, coming up here, when it passes your head, then start rotating and coming out. So what is happening is actually your hand has rotate and this you will soon feel it if you have any sort of discomfort in your shoulder you won't be able to rotate as effectively but keep doing it we want to do it even if you are sort of have any discomfort obviously you need to talk to your doctors to check that those this sort of movement is appropriate to you the key is to don't stop moving move it in a in a gentle way and gradually increase the intensity and that, that eventually you'll be able to regain the full mobility, or at least that's all what we hope. Uh, let's have a look. We probably won't have that much time. Okay, here are some more examples to show you. Uh, you, you, you see the a statue of a, of, a, of a tiger. So this is a movement from Yi Jing Jing. Yi Jing Jing is supposed to be coming out of the Shaolin Temple. You know, Buddhist monks, they have to sit cross-legged every day for hours. They have to meditate, but it doesn't help the blood flow. So after meditation, they have to get up and do some exercise. This exercise is actually you're coming up and you are pouncing forward, etc. Uh, and anyway, if we have time, we may do something like that in the future. But this, you can see the tiger arches back and then in the movement, it then passes forward. So it works to increase the flexibility of the spine. And it's the same with, uh, you, you see this uh, silk scroll from Ma Wang Dui. It was unearthed in the 1970s in Changsha. Uh, it was sort of the, from a tomb. The tomb belonged to nearly 2,000 years ago in the West Han Dynasty. And you see all those figures, uh, do, their bodies in different shapes. And that is the earliest example, earliest evidence of uh, the Taoist Dao Ying exercise. Okay. Uh, and then Dao Ying 12, which we've been practicing uh, on Wednesdays for 30 weeks. Okay. Some movements are very old. Some of the routines are very old, hundreds of years. Some of the routines are newly designed, but they are not plucked out of uh, thin air. It, there is a strong theoretical basis uh, looking at, for example, 
the silk scroll here, looking at the figures and what they are doing. I don't think you are able to see it here, not very clearly, but actually next to each figure, there is a, a caption telling you what the figure is doing. Okay. And then in combination with the TCM theory, they devise new routines to practice. Okay. Uh, maybe we can just do one little exercise. You know, if you have been working at your desk all day, maybe you have sore neck, etc. The first one with the man, what, what he's doing is uh, the five animal play. In this exercise, Hua Tuo, the most famous uh, Chinese uh, medicine doctor, he devised this, picked five animals and asked you to do certain exercise that for this one, the man, what he's doing is just imagine in him, yourself as a, as a monkey. So you start with your hands pressing down, fingers stretched out, okay? And then you very quickly pull all your fingers together. So make your hands into a hook and then slowly, slowly coming up. As you come up, you shook your shoulders. So what you are doing is you're squeezing everything together come up on your toes okay and then turn your head now it's not easy oh i wobbled so it's not easy to come up on your toes and turn your head and then coming back to the center and relaxed and press down okay and then we can do it again so very quickly get all the fingers together so hands into hooks and then shut your shoulders come up so squeeze your arm, your hands, your shoulders, your neck. You bring your neck back as if you are a tortoise. Okay. And then coming up on tiptoes, then turn your head to look to the other side and then coming back to the front. Now you're supposed to do it slowly, slowly and relax and press down. So movements like that really helps with the neck because you, you are asking your neck, your shoulders to do different things. The middle one, you can also try this. So find yourself a little bit of uh, space. Okay, so breathe in and then bring both hands up on the side. Now we, are do, we are not doing the full movement, just part, part of the movements. Okay, and then coming down. So when you come down, soften the knees and then breathe in again and Stand on one leg, lift the knees of the other leg and the hands are back to back. And then relax and coming down. Okay. Soften the knees and then come up again, breathe in. So flap your wings just horizontal and then coming down. Soften the knee and then come up again, breathe in. Raise the other knee, okay, standing on one leg, arms coming above your head, okay, the, the, the back, uh, hands back to back, not touching, and then pressing down. Okay. So standing on one leg also is very important in Daoying because uh, balance is one of the first motor skills we lose as we get older. By standing on one leg, uh, it, it helps you to maintain your balance. Also, it helps you to be mindful because if you don't concentrate, you wobble and you, you, have, you just have to concentrate. The other thing uh, is uh, in Tai Jian Qi Gong, uh, the, the fingers, it's very important to work on the extremities because the fingertips, the extremities is seen as uh, the end of your tendons. So you want the blood flow to all the fingers. By doing this, what we are doing is we are bending on our wrist. And then the fingers is like the, the wings, the bird's wings by doing that. Okay, so you, the, the six, uh, Yang, hand yang meridians flowing at the back of your hand. Six, not six, three. Three yang meridians on the hand and then three yin meridians on the hand. By doing the wrist, when you have a very flexible uh, wrist, it encourages the, the energy flow. 
Okay, so that's why in Qigong there's a lot of exercise involving the fingers. Okay. Good. I'm sorry, we don't have enough time. Uh, if I think uh, I'm, I was, well, because it's captured on, on screen, so you'll be able to see it. And I've given you some links if you want to find out more about Laozi or Taoism, or BBC has got some good links as well. And there is a film, if you are able to get this film, assuming that you are interested in Chinese culture and uh, uh, TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, this film called the Gua Sha Treatment is excellent. It's about a different treatment of uh, just scraping the back or different part of the body and it helps the heat. The heat sometimes is like you can see as a, a different term for inflammation and, and that helps to cure the disease. You, you don't take any medicines, but the only problem is if you scratch the back, it leaves, well, immediately it will come up reddish or purplish, etc. Doesn't look very well, but it, it disappears. Anyway, it crosses uh, major cultural misunderstandings and gets the couple in, in big trouble in American court. Anyway, that but that's well well worth uh, watching. Uh, you are most welcome to to join me in my qigong class. I've got many free classes. So here's an address. You can come to the join me an email. There's probably too much information there. Just drop me an email. Okay, now let's open for questions. I should stop, stop sharing first. Sorry, I, I rushed it. <laughs> no, thank, thank you very much, uh, Feisha, for a very engaging and informative um, talk. Uh, my colleague, uh, Tabia, unfortunately, she had the internet problem, like okay. we all do. So I'm stepping in to just uh, inviting questions. So if anyone has got any questions, I mean, please uh, put it in the chat or put your hands up. Um, yeah, so far, we, we've got colleagues who commenting, they found it's really good and helpful. And uh, I've been... Um, practicing with fascia for uh, the last few months and it's really helpful. Yep, I've got a message here from Peter. Uh, my interest is in Asian culture, you dare to reach out to me. Uh, yeah, well, or you can just join me uh, an email. Yeah, so if I type my email in here. Questions, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, I think Catherine. It, yes, yeah, Catherine. Um, I've uh, unmuted. It's just a, a comment, really, something that I find really interesting. Um, in that we, you know, you talked about the um, the saliva and the the dragon practice of, yeah. and I know in Chinese medicine that body fluids are incredibly important because you know it transports things around the body, and it's interesting now that science is showing that saliva has important enzymes in it um, and it's almost as if science is is catching up very slowly um, you know modern science and then again with the um, the idea of not wasting our chi mm -hmm. um, the teaching that uh, when you're breathing that you keep your mouth closed so because the idea is that you know if your mouth is open you're letting your chi out and it's mm -hmm. leaking out and we need to preserve it as much as possible and, and that's now coming to light with the the breathing science of breathing through our noses and the, the nitric oxide, you know, which warms and filters the air rather than mouth breathing. It's important yes. for our immune system. So all these links are, are, are coming out uh, and diet as well with, I don't know who, who it was that wrote it, you all know, eat food, mainly plants, not too much. Um, uh, you know, and again, now it's sort of corresponding with currents uh, views on diet. Um, yeah. It's just great how it's all it, at last coming together, and I think it will carry on doing so. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Catherine, for your for your comment. Yeah, it, it is. I think I think uh, basically I I see the Tai Chi and Qigong practice as something that's very safe, very very gentle. And for example, just the red dragon, your tongue 
So drawing circles in your mouth and it creates the saliva and the saliva is, is good, et cetera, et cetera. And just think, it's so simple. I think the Asian people, I think we, I feel nowadays we've got a lot more knowledge, but, on, but we are not any wiser. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's because um, our modern Western medicine doesn't have those basics of how to look after ourselves. It's a, we have a system that's focused on, on disease and sickness, but not on health. And we don't have those tried and tested age old philosophies of, of what's important for health in uh, the same way that Chinese yeah. medicine does. Yes. Mm. So Feishan, we've got some questions and yeah. people would like to know more about uh, meditation in Taoism. Mm -hmm. Can you say a, a little bit more, like uh, the meditation in Taoism, um, how people practice or what's the meaning? And uh, also, um, Juliet wants to know more about the Liu Zijue. Okay, the, the Liu Zi, well, I think uh, in Qigong has got this long history, but if you look at uh, contemporary, modern China, there were several periods when they have become very popular. Like now is one of the periods uh, because of COVID-19 and people can't go out and exercise, but to do Qigong, you can do it at home. It doesn't need a lot of space, etc. So it's becoming more popular. And uh, the, the health Qigong was devised in the early 10, 2000 and in the, in the noughties, as a response to Falun Gong. Maybe you've all heard about Falun Gong. So Falun Gong is a type of Qigong. There are many, 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 many different types of uh, Qigong. But the, some of the teaching of Falun Gong went a little bit too far. So he asked you just meditate, just think about this sort of the, the, the religious leader and, and then you don't need to go and see the doctor, et cetera, et cetera. So it's gone a little bit extreme. So <clears throat> the government tried to stop it, but in stopping it, it upset a lot of people because there are genuine health benefit if you practice in moderation, if you practice it properly under proper guidance, uh, et cetera. So in order to meet the need in the night, uh, uh, nearly 2000, round about that uh, period, uh, the sports administration of China then commissioned a few sports universities working with TCM universities and they devised some Qigong set and they called it health Qigong. And coming back to your question about the six healing sound, six healing sound is the only one set of Qigong that the focus is on breathing. There is a little bit of movement. I think some of you do the health uh, six healing sounds with me. You know that the movement itself is very, very simple and it does not really matter that much whether you, you, you do the full, ex sort of the full extent of the movement. The focus is on the, on the sound. By making the sound, you breathe, well, you, you breathe in a reverse abdominal breathing. Reverse abdominal breathing is you engage your core, and you, you, you engage the panorim, the little bit of muscle between your genital and the anus. Put it in, and then when, when you breathe out, you, you let go of it. And in, by making the sound, making the sound helps you to prolong the out breath. So what we want is a very, very long out breath. You don't need to think about in breath. Once your lung is empty of air, you naturally will breathe in. So I think it's the same principle as uh, some yoga, panayama practice. And it, that, that would be the six healing sounds. I think if your question is about which sound related to which organ, then the shu sound related to liver, and, and you, as you're saying the sound, you turn, but by turning the body, you also, you are stretching the middle meridians because all the meridians on the body are troubles vertically, except the bell meridians that it's like a, a girdle, it sort of contracts, it controls all the vertically uh, troubled meridians. So by turning your body, you're exercising that part as well. And then you, you, your eyes will need to be looking at certain place, et cetera, et cetera. And then there are certain sounds that you will say, breathe out and who sound, and you'll be working on the spleen. And then the si sound, you drop your, 
elbow, stroke the shoulder, open the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades together, hide your neck. So you're like a tortoise, bringing the, the, the head back into your, your shell and then release it. And you, when you're ready to make the sound, you push both hands out and you pronounce the word S. And it helps to, to increase the lung capacity. And then you open and you bring fresh energy, fresh qi into the body. And then you breathe out the turbid qi, et cetera, et cetera. So there are six sounds. And we won't have time to talk about all six sounds. Mm -hmm. yeah. thank, thank, thank you, Feisha. We just got one more question maybe yeah. before we finish. And mm -hmm. the people is asking, is there a particular time of the day that's best to set aside, to look inside yourself, to do the deep breathing? Uh, I, I don't think there is a, a fixed sign uh, myself. I try not to do it immediately before I go to bed. So I, I would like to sort of finish my exercise for a while before it's bedtime. So, but some people may find it useful to do it the other way around. I tend to do it immediately after a full stretch so there is the Erme stretch exercise. So after the stretch, then I will feel I'm ready to then look inside and do the breathing. I think it's very flexible. And in terms of the length of time, how long and how short, again, go with the flow, as the Taoists typically say. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And I think um, we really enjoyed it. And uh, uh, we got lots of comments, people enjoying your talk. And uh, so hopefully we will have another chance to well you, welcome back you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Karen, for the opportunity. And thank you very much for signing up and joining in for the talk. And thank you, Catherine, for your comments. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you.